Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, Arm Dev Summit has just finished. It was a three-day virtual event. We weren't able to go to San Francisco as we've done in other years. Lots of interesting things to learn and buried amongst all the different announcements was talk about the processes that Arm are going to release in 2021 and even into 2022. And they've got interesting names like Matterhorn and Makalu. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, let's start with the Cortex-A processors. That's what you have in your smartphone, a Cortex-A 77, Cortex-A 78, whatever. Okay, and ARM produce a new Cortex-A uh, processor roughly once a year. And the chip that will be coming out, probably be announced around May of next year, so May of 2021, is Matterhorn. And we know that between Matterhorn and then the next one, that's uh, Makalu, there's gonna be a generally a 30% performance increase compared to the Cortex-A78. So if you do a bit of maths there, that means about a 14% increase for Matterhorn, and then a 14% over that for uh, Makalu. So we know that we're gonna be getting some uh, in great in performance increases, and these are for single threaded performance increases. So obviously, then depending on how many cores they're put into, will change the multi-threaded uh, setup. No talk about the frequency, no talk about whether that's five nanometer, three nanometer. We're assuming five nanometer for both of those processors. So that looks like we're gonna see some really interesting stuff. Now, what's it gonna be called? Probably gonna be called, well, if we had the Cortex A77, we had the Cortex A78, well, it's gonna be the Cortex A79, I would guess. And I would really hope also that we get an X2, a Cortex X2, based on the same microarchitecture, but for those key customers who want to bring that extra performance with greater silicon space, greater caching, and so on, just like we had the X1 this year. And then as I mentioned into 2022, so kind of spring of 2022, late spring, early summer of 2022, we're gonna see uh, Makalu, which again, overall, compared to the Cortex A78, is gonna bring a 30% single core uh, performance increase. Again, as I said, probably on five nanometer. Now, what will it be called? Cortex A80, it's a possibility, though maybe now because they're going out of the 70s into the 80s, maybe they'll do something, the marketing team will do something with the naming, who knows? And of course, it would be great also to see an X3 variant that comes out of that. But what we do know is therefore that over the next couple of years, ARM are very confident they're bringing double digit performance increases uh, over each generation. And that's certainly something we can look forward to. Now, one of the interesting things we found out about Makalu is it's gonna be a 64-bit only processor. Now, what does that mean? Well, at the moment, most Cortex-A processors can run 32-bit and 64-bit code. It's called ARCH32 and ARCH64, and they're both part of the ARM V8 architecture. Now, if you've got a Cortex-A77, you've got a Cortex-A76, it can run 32-bit apps, 64-bit apps without any problem. However, from Makalu onwards, for the big cores, and we'll talk about why the big cores in a moment, uh, it's only gonna be ARCH64. So all that 32-bit stuff, just goes away. So what do you get from that? You get two things. First of all, better performance, because 64-bit offers better performance than 32-bit. And also, you can remove any of that silicon in there that was dealing with the 32-bit stuff. It can just get pushed out of the way because it's no longer needed. Now, it's not really a problem, of course, because Android has been 64-bit since way back with Android version 5. And since August of 2019, Google has been insisting that uh, developers who upload apps to the Play Store upload both a 32-bit and at least a 64-bit version uh, so that there, there is that compatibility. So when Android finally moves over to just 64-bit only, then that's not a problem because most of the developers have already now, since last year, and this is two years in advance, you've got this three-year period where everybody's making sure that their apps are fully supported on both 32-bit and 64-bit. In fact, Arm have got a statistic that says that actually over 60% of apps are already 64-bit compatible, and the 40% of apps that are not 64-bit compatible are actually mainly based in Asia and outside of Google's kind of domain, outside of the Play Store area, and those companies will really need to kind of start mandating support for 64-bits. Now, I said earlier on only in the big cores. Well, why is that? Well, a standard smartphone uh, SOC has eight cores in it, 
four of them will be high performance big cores like the Cortex A77, the Cortex A78, and four of them will be power efficiency cores like the Cortex A53 or the Cortex A55. And those cores are used, for example, when you are just you know, checking your Instagram, when you're watching a video, you don't need those high performance cores to be used to, to do something that's really relatively slow in terms of smartphone performance. Now, the big cores going forward from MacLeod will be 64-bit only. However, the little cores, like the Cortex A55 that there is now, will be both 32-bit and 64-bit, or there'll be variants of them which will support 32-bit and 64-bit. And the reason for that is that in some markets, it's still popular to have octa-core phones or quad-core phones that are only based on the efficiency core. So a quad-core uh, A53 or an octa-core A53, an octa-core A55. And in the future, that market will still exist. So they want to have the possibility of 32-bit and 64-bit on smaller cores. Now, what that probably means is that one of two things, and I'm not quite sure which way it is, it either means that we're going to get a new power efficiency core sometime at the, uh, when Makalu is announced, and that's going to come in both a 64-bit variant and a 32-bit plus 64-bit variant, and then the chip makers can decide, well, what they're building. Do they want the 32-bit code included in the smaller cores? If they're going for 64-bit big cores, that doesn't make any sense to have 32-bit support in the smaller cores. There is a technical possibility that they could do something clever where they keep the smaller cores with 32-bit and any 32-bit app only run on the power efficiency cores. That could be quite an interesting thing, but you then the whole heterogeneous thing of how those things are scheduled, because normally now a process can swap from one core to another core without any problem, because they all offer the, exactly the same level of functionality. Uh, so that would be interesting. Or the other alternative is that by then the Cortex A55 will come out in a new variant, which will have just the 64 bits in it. I'm hoping there's gonna be a new power efficiency core by the time Makalu is announced, and it will come in a 64 bit or a 64 bit plus 32 bit variant. Now, another interesting thing that was announced at the show is a Project Trifid. Now, a Trifid, for those of you who don't know, is a man-eating carnivorous plant that was invented for the story by John Wyndham, 1951, the day of the Trifid. Kind of a bit of a cult thing in uh, British society. Lots of movies and TV adaptations of this, of this story. We're here because of the Trifids. Trifids. Now, Project Trifid is a very ultra low power microprocessor. It requires such little power that it can actually be activated just by the energy you get from an RFID scan. And it uses non-volatile memory, which basically means it gets enough energy, it kind of boots up, it carries on doing what it was doing, and everything it writes is in non-volatile memory, which means when it loses all its energy, the kind of the status is staved. And then when it gets enough energy again, it kind of boots up and then carries on what it was doing. And that could have been two seconds later or 20 hours later, doesn't matter. And uh, it then, you know, shuts down again. And the main application of this kind of thing is logistics. So, you know, a package that is being transported and every time it gets scanned or deliberately can be activated at a certain stage, it can kind of do some stuff, record some information, do some processing, then shut down again. And of course, there are other applications in kind of, you know, medical, uh, wearables, you know, something that can truly just kind of boot up, do some stuff and then disappear again with just a few uh, milliseconds worth of energy for it to do a few things. I think that's quite an exciting uh, idea and it doesn't care that it loses the, the energy runs out because it just boots up again the next time it's got enough power. So that's a really interesting thing that I'm looking forward for us uh, to explore when that comes out, Project Trifid, so ultra, ultra low power microcontrollers. And the last thing I want to talk about is really just a recap of an announcement that was made a couple of weeks ago about the Neoverse processors. Now, Neoverse are ARM's server processors, and they have proven to be incredibly popular when you think about the offerings from Amazon uh, and what they're doing with the Neoverse processors. And in fact, most uh, cloud providers are now offering ARM-based uh, solutions for the server and it's great in so many different domains particularly if you think about you know gaming game streaming then of course it makes great sense if you've got a, an android game for example and you want to do a streaming service well if that runs on an arm chip just like it does in your phone but it runs on that in the server and then couple that with a powerful gpu that can be segmented to serve different uh, threads 
on the CPU, then you've got this kind of gaming solution. And I know that NVIDIA do that kind of thing. Their GPUs can kind of be partitioned up so that each one serves a different client and then combine that with an actual uh, ARM CPU. Anyway, I diverge. There is the Neoverse N1 at the moment. ARM have now announced the Neoverse V1. Now the V1 offers a 50% single core performance boost compared to the N1, and it also offers scalable vector extensions. Now, scalable vector extensions is really interesting technology. It's what you find in the A64FX, which is part of, of course, that supercomputer that has now got the number one spot, an ARM-powered supercomputer. And if you want to know more about uh, SVE, do tell me in the comments below, and I'll think about putting a video together. And they also announced the Neoverse N2, which will offer a 40% increase in power compared to the Neoverse N1. Whereas the V1 offers 50%, but here's the difference. The V1 concentrates mainly on performance, so it can use more energy and therefore get a bit hotter, which means the kind of the practical limit is 96 cores in a CPU, whereas the N2, because it uses just slightly less power, but still offers a 40% increase compared to the uh, N1, it can go up to 128 cores. So it depends on whether you need that kind of brute force, single threaded performance, or whether you need lots and lots of threads and actually being able to go up to 128 threads is better than having a 50% increase compared to a 40%. So there's not much of a trade-off here, but you get those extra cores. And of course, in the data center, every time a connection is coming in from the internet, from whatever, having those extra cores is really useful because you can run each of those connections on its own core and get it serviced quickly and then dispatched and the next connection comes in. So that's why multi-threaded cores are really important in the data center. Okay, so that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video about Matterhorn and Makalu and all these other projects Triffid and so on. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, well, please stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.